This video is brought to you by Spigen. I've been using the brand new Google Pixel 8 for the past two weeks, and there's a lot to like about this unique phone, from its durable uh, build quality and hardware to its cool software features. But with its new higher price tag come higher expectations. And throughout my review, I'm also going to see how the Pixel 8 compares to the competition, including the iPhone 15 and the Galaxy S23, to ultimately help you decide if the Pixel 8 is the right phone for you. But first, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 15 Pro. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your favorite feature of the Pixel 8, along with your Instagram username, and then follow me on Instagram at the Jans Schuddeboom, where I'll announce the winner very soon on the 31st of October. The Pixel 8 with 128 gigabytes start at $699 or 699 pounds. Now this is a $100 price increase compared to last year's Pixel 7. And this brings it much closer in terms of price compared to the iPhone 15 and the Galaxy S23. And we'll talk more about how these phones compare as we go. Now I opted to get the Pixel 8 in this rose color, which I think looks really great, uh, especially like the rose gold uh, frame that you get on the sides. However, if you do want something more subtle, it also comes in hazel uh, and obsidian, and I'll leave all the purchase links to the Pixel 8 down in the description. Now, from a design perspective, uh, the Pixel 8 looks like, well, a pixel. Uh, the rounded design make the phone super comfortable to hold in the hand, even though it may not look as sleek as, say, an S23. Now, the horizontal camera module on the back is super recognizable, uh, and I especially like that it practically eliminates table wobble. Now, the matte frame on the edges is great because it resists fingerprints. However, the glossy glass on the back will unfortunately attract them. Uh, I would have liked to see Google use a matte glass like they did on, say, the 8 Pro. Using the Pixel 8, I really appreciate the high quality haptics. Whether you're switching between apps or tapping toggles, the deep and sharp haptic feedback add almost a tactile feel to the phone and genuinely make it more fun to use. Strange to say, I know, but it really is true. Uh, and I miss these kind of haptics on say the S23. Unfortunately though, the speakers on the Pixel 8 are not as strong. They lack clarity as well as depth, uh, especially in the low end, falling short of that of say the iPhone 15. On the front, the display on the Pixel 8 is really great. Nice rhyme. Uh, the 6.2 inch size strikes that perfect balance between portability uh, as well as usability. And colors on this OLED panel are accurate and the Full HD Plus resolution means that finer details are also sharp. But perhaps the biggest upgrade or one of the biggest upgrades is the fact that the screen now goes at up to 2000 nits of brightness. And this makes it noticeably brighter compared to say the S23, something you really do appreciate, especially when out in the sun. However, another big upgrade that the display gets is that it is now 120 hertz and this makes everything you do feel and appear extra smooth. However, this does have to be activated in the settings and I highly recommend you do so even if it costs a little bit of battery, but more on battery life in a sec. The display as well as the back both use Gorilla Glass Victus uh, and this means you get good crack resistance but they do scratch easily so do make sure to use a screen protector and I'll be sure to leave my recommended screen protector down in the description. Now looking at the top of the display here uh, the punch hole camera is barely noticeable and this is great when you're viewing content but at the same time the face unlock still falls short from the far more secure face ID that you're going to find on the iPhone. In fact on the Pixel 8 I prefer to use the optical underscreen fingerprint sensor which works well though it's still not as fast or reliable as the ultrasonic sensor that is found on the S23, especially if say your hands are damp uh, or you're using your phone out in the rain. Before we check out the camera of the Pixel 8, probably the coolest part uh, of this phone, let me show you these made for Google cases from Spigen. Now I really enjoy using Spigen products and this is why they've become a long-term partner of the channel. And their new range uh, all the way from the Tough Armor case to the Thin Fit case and even Pixel watch protection are no exception. Starting with the Tough Armor, uh, which uses dual layer protection to provide incredible drop protection to keep your Pixel looking perfect. It even doubles uh, as a kickstand, and this is super handy when watching videos on the go. The Ultra Hybrid cases let the color of your Pixel shine through while still providing protection uh, from scratches and drops. And it comes in three versions, uh, including this iconic Zero One, which shows a detail schematic of the inside of your Pixel 8. For a more minimal look, the Thin Fit uses this really nice coated plastic, uh, which feels so good in the hand and comes in a range of colors. Let me know which is your favorite. Me, I like this mute badge paired with my Pixel in Rose. 
the truss pattern on the liquid air case adds not only a unique design element, but also adds grip. And like all the other cases, uses air cushion technology for extra corner protection. And then for the Pixel Watch 1 and 2, the light fit strap band made from this durable fabric uh, is so comfortable to wear on the wrist that you almost forget you're even wearing the watch. To protect and add character to your Pixel products with Spigen's made for Google accessories, be sure to head to the links in the description. The Pixel 8 features a 50 megapixel main wide lens, which can also be used as a 2x telephoto lens and also has a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. And I've got to say, in general, I really like the pictures uh, that the Pixel 8 produces. Colors are realistic, much like on iPhone, but adds a bit of contrast for some extra texture. The Pixel 8 especially shines when it comes to dynamic range, definitely amongst the best I've seen, keeping an impressive level of detail both in the darker as well as the lighter parts of the frame and producing less noise when say compared to the S23. However, at times photos from the Pixel 8 can be a bit too sharp for my liking. I also found the shutter lag, the delay between pressing the button and it actually taking the photo to be more noticeable than say on the iPhone 15. 4K 60fps video looks impressive with good stabilization and color reproduction. It handles adjustments to changes in exposure and focus better than say the S23, but still not as good as the king of smartphone video, the iPhone. Taking photos and videos on the Pixel 8 is great, but just as cool are the AI-powered editing features that it offers. For example, you can use Magic Eraser to instantly remove, say, a person uh, or a street sign from your photo, and it does so remarkably well. Then, to take it one step further with Magic Editor, you can literally modify entire sections of a photo. For example, change the clouds in the sky or the grass in a field, and you can even resize and move objects or people within your photo. Not all outcomes are as good, but more often than not, the results look impressively convincing. There's even more smart editing features that Google added to the Pixel, like Best Take and Audio Editor, that we don't have time to explore today, but all of these features make editing easier and more accessible, and together create more reason to buy a Pixel phone. If you've watched my videos, you will know that longevity is really important to me. So I was really impressed when Google said that the Pixel 8 will get up to seven years of software support and updates, meaning that this phone should technically last till the year 2030. This is even better than Apple's six to seven years and Samsung's four to five years, not to mention the two to three years you'll still get with many other Android phones. And this is in part thanks to the Tensor G3 chip and the 8GB of RAM that power the Pixel 8. And I gotta say, using the phone over the past weeks, it's always felt snappy and fast. You truly get flagship level performance with minimal stutters and lags. Android 14 here is really well optimized, as I would expect. Battery life was good too on this phone. I found myself getting around seven to eight hours of screen on time, and that is with 120 hertz refresh rate turned on. Uh, and this I would say is comparable to the iPhone 15 and the S23, which means the Pixel 8 can last me all day with say around 25% or so remaining. It charges at 24 watts, which is semi-fast, uh, going from zero to 100% in just about one and a half hours. So who is the Pixel 8 for? Well, now that the Pixel is priced more closely to the iPhone 15 and the S23, and in some regions actually cost more, uh, the competition is strong. However, even with that in mind, and in the context of these competitors, the Pixel 8 is a great all-round phone that delivers in all key areas, and on top of that, also adds some really special software features that you won't find anywhere else, making it a phone I can definitely recommend to many. Let me know if you have any questions at all. As always, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. And if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my recent iPhone 15 review, as well as my iPhone 15 versus Galaxy S23 comparison video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.